The hearing will come to order. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to the EPW uh, subcommittee on uh, clean air and nuclear safety. And I would like to welcome the witnesses. And our first witness is somebody we know very well. Uh, and um, so I'm just going to introduce everybody. Um, are we going to do our opening statements beforehand? Or? Okay, we'll do our opening statements and then we'll rec I'll recognize you. Senator Flake, excuse me, uh, but he, as we know, he's our colleague from Arizona, Senator Jeff Flake, a sponsor of S452, the Ordeal Act, and um, we're, we're glad to have him here. So with that, um, I will proceed with my opening statement. So today's hearing in the Subcommittee on Clean Air and Nuclear Safety will focus on the challenges posed by the implementation of the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, the NACs, for ground level ozone. I'll begin by recognizing myself from my opening statement and then uh, move to uh, our uh, ranking member, White House, for his. Um, so, thank you. Roughly a year has passed since the subcommittee last had a hearing on the ozone NACs and legislation seeking to address the uncertainty regarding implementation of the new standards. A year later, no legislative fix has been enacted, and so the uncertainty continues. The EPA took seven years to finalize the implementing regulations of its 2008 standards. Nearly contemporaneously, it announced a revision, the EPA did, announced a revision of those standards to 70 parts per billion. Now state and local governments and private industry are faced with potentially abiding by two different standards at the exact same time. To that end, I request unanimous consent to submit for the record two letters, one signed by more than 200 trade associations from around the country to congressional leadership in support of last year's versions of S263 and a letter sent yesterday by the Association of Air Pollution Control Agencies to this subcommittee expressing concerns over the NAC's review and implementation process. Is there objection? Hearing none, so submitted. This is a multi-billion dollar issue, as there are severe constraints on economic development in areas designated as non-attainment. Perversely, in the non-attainment areas, it may be more profitable for a company to close a factory and kill jobs to create ozone offset credits to sell than it would be to try to reinvest or expand that facility. Furthermore, while this committee is improving our nation's infrastructure, non-attainment status delays affected areas access to federal support for transportation projects, and I think one of our witnesses will address that issue. The bills before us today are meant to end the regulatory uncertainty and, its in, and the impact. S-263, the Ozone Standards Implementation Act, which I introduced with Senators Cornyn, Fisher, Flake, Enahoff, and Manchin, would make much needed reforms to the implementation of the standards, including requiring the EPA promulgate Im implementing regulations at the time it finalizes the standards, not eight years later. Whether, where there is a range of levels that would protect public health, it would also require the EPA to consider the selected standard that is technically feasible. S-452, the Ozone Regulatory Delay and Extension of Assessment, assessment Length, or the Ordeal Act, has been introduced by Senator Flake with me as a co-sponsor, Senators Cotton, McCain, and Wicker. Would, at, similarly at, to, the, to my bill, move the EPA from a five-year schedule of reviewing the standards to a 10-year schedule affording enough time for compliance. The EPA has, fail, has repeatedly failed to comply with the existing five-year schedule. And as the standards have gradually tightened, compliance has become costlier and more complicated. The longer schedule will give much needed time to comply. Different states and regions have unique challenges in meeting the ozone standards. Elevation, weather, natural phenomenon, traffic, varying levels and types of industrial activity and interstate and international transport of ozone and its precursors all impact the ozone levels and vary significantly by jurisdictions. With all these variables in mind, modeling can be extremely complicated and is largely left up to the states and municipalities at great cost. Western and mountain states are particularly burdened by elevated background levels of ozone. To achieve compliance, governments and industry need a clear, certain timeline for implementation of standards and a willing partner in the EPA. Up to now, we have not had the support in Washington. The EPA repeatedly misses the deadlines for finalization. 2008 was not an outlier. One of these delays was as long as 14 years. Implementation almost always takes longer than the five years required by the statute. Now, just as the 2008 standards are being implemented, implementation regulation for 2015 are being drawn up. Areas that have just reached attainment status 
now once again will be thrown into non-attainment, even as their ozone levels nationally are trending downwards. Based on data collected between 2013 and 2015, the number of counties in non-attainment will increase from 197 to 214 across 20 states and the District of Columbia. EPA has estimated the cost to comply with these new standards would be $1.4 billion annually for 49 states and $800 million annually for California, which would have until the 2030s to reach attainment. Ground level ozone is already declining nationwide <coughs> due to emissions control. There's no need to rush into the implementation. Even a state like West Virginia, which is projected to be in attainment, I want you to hear this, under both the 2008 and the 2015 standards. Uh, our state has raised opposition because of the tightening standards over the uncertainty in the cost. The West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection has noticed in communications to the EPA that the cost of, low, of achieving lower ozone con concentrations increase exponentially as the standard is lowered. A policy decision as to the level of which NACs should be set should not require the expenditure of billions of dollars to, to achieve health benefits that have not been, uh, are not uh, extreme, are, are dubious under the science. I request unanimous consent that this letter be entered into the record. Our panel has unique perspective. I welcome them, and uh, I look forward to the debate and hearing from our witnesses. I yield to the ranking member, White House, for a five-minute opening statement.